So today I'm looking at the long-awaited Linux Mint 12 Lisa release. Now there has been a lot of development put into Linux Mint 12. It is a vast departure from Linux Mint 11 as of course all of the Ubuntu derivatives are going through at this stage and that is grappling with GNOME 3. Uh, now Linux Mint has become the most popular Linux distribution according to DistroWatch's rankings. Uh, now this has just been a development that's happened in the last couple of months, mainly since Ubuntu started shipping Unity. Uh, a lot of disgruntled Ubuntu users did go to Linux Mint 11 as their, uh, as their uh, SOS distribution. And now with Linux Mint 12 along, it's, it's coming to question whether Linux Mint 12 is capable of uh, taking on those GNOME 3 and Unity refugees as well. To, to make a long story short, uh, Linux, I really do like the direction that Linux Mint have decided to go with GNOME 3. Uh, the fact that they have to adopt GNOME 3 is inevitable, and uh, they've done an admirable job here of adapting GNOME 3 to suit users that are used to uh, the previous Linux Mint desktop experience, one that has gained them uh, me, uh, much fame and uh, and a vast user base over the last couple of years. Uh, now, with, with, of course, GNOME 3, uh, they did have to make some uh, significant improvements here to actually make it work uh, similar to at least what Linux Mint 11, 10 and all the ones prior to that. Basically, I'm going to work a bit backwards. I'm going to give my final thoughts here at the beginning of the video because most of you uh, would have already seen Linux Mint reviews, but I will be diving into it a bit more in depth if you do want to hang around. So basically, my thoughts about Linux Mint 12 is that I really do like their direction that they're going, but their implementation isn't quite 100% there yet. For a first, for a, for a 1.0 release of the whole Mint GNOME shell extensions, uh, they've really done a fantastic job, and it's great to see that they have put work in here and they are considering the community as their first and foremost priority, but at the same time, uh, we still do have some work to do and some uh, and some extra tweaks that I think they will make in the in the near future. Um, having said all that, it is still a polished release, and it is still something that uh, that I'd say many users are going to be happy with. Now, it's not just Mint uh, GNOME shell extensions as well. It is the Mate. They do offer the Mate, which is GNOME 2. They do offer the GNOME 2 fork. Now, again, the I really do like the direction that they are deciding to support Mate, and they are one of the first distributions to actually uh, support Mate on a desktop. Um, however, like I've said before, the uh, the implementation isn't 100% there yet. Uh, uh, they are working quite hard on it, and uh, and it's great to see they are supporting it because there will be many users who will be happy to use Mate. But for right now, let's just have a look at the Mint GNOME shell extensions, uh, which is basically the the default setting for Linux Mint 12. Now, essentially, from from the desktop, it does it does look quite similar to previous releases at first glance. The only difference that you're going to notice is this top panel. This top panel is really where most of the action is going to happen, like any other GNOME 3 distribution. You've got your you've got your username and you've got your calendar and you've got all of your notifications here as well as they've thrown in some nice notifications here with the sound so that when you're playing music through Banshee instead of having the sound menu integrated into the volume which used to sit down here on the on the uh, bottom left hand panel it now sits up the top so when you start playing a song for instance I'm just going to start playing a song here it will uh, show up the album art and all of that sort of stuff up on top here. Uh, now, this is pretty convenient and it works much the same way that most Ubuntu users are going to be used to. Uh, it is, of course, on the top panel instead of the bottom left, uh, the bottom right, sorry, I can't tell my left from right. So, yeah, mixed, mixed reactions there, but again, it's good to see that they are able to uh, work in some nice notifications here along with the update manager icon, which I've pulled up here on the other desktop. Uh, now, for those of you who aren't familiar with GNOME Shell, you can go and watch other videos on how GNOME Shell works, because basically that's what we're stuck with here as the default desktop. Um, GNOME Shell is, uh, I mean, there are countless videos on GNOME Shell, so I'm not going to explain it too much here, but you've got your favorite applications on the side here, you've got your windows that are open here, and you've got your workspace manager on the side here. But they do also have the traditional window task list on the bottom here, much like a Windows taskbar like Linux Mint has had for eons, and they do have an adaptation of the Mint menu. Now, this menu is a bit of a disappointment in my opinion. Uh, it's not near the same functionality that you got with the previous menu uh, of the famous Linux Mint menu, which was really one of the major perks. And uh, and they've really uh, they've really fun they've really pushed invested a lot of time and effort into developing the the previous Linux Mint menu to the awesome menu that it was. Some people liked it, some people didn't. For those for whom it worked, uh, it was a pretty fantastic menu. Now we do have something similar here with uh, filtered with filtered application lists. 
and you do have your favorites along the side here and you do have filtered searching so you can search for your favorite applications and it does work to that extent but it's not quite the same functionality for instance i can't i can't ask for a certain package to be installed just by typing it in the search box i can't search google or wikipedia or any of that fun stuff that we could do with the last two releases of linux mint um so having said that they, I mean, they're really, uh, they're really at a bit of a crossroads here because they are having to work in entirely new technology into a way that, um, that previous users of Linux Mint aren't going to be too upset with. And I really do like that approach. However, there are still kinks that are obviously GNOME 3 about this thing that, uh, they could do with some more tweaking. Now, of course, the software manager is still here in Linux Mint 12 as it was in Linux Mint 11 with the revamped user interface. And honestly, it does look quite pretty. Um, and again, I mean, the mint, all the mint tools are going to be present here as you would expect. So that means you're going to get the, uh, the backup tools. You're going to get the software manager. You're going to get the welcome screen, of course, that you do get with, uh, with all the Linux mint releases that show the, uh, release notes and helpful links that you might want to, uh, to access. But here in the software manager, it all is nicely categorized as we've all seen before. So nothing really is new here, apart from the fact that it suits the GTK theme quite nicely. Now, speaking of the theme, that is something I do want to touch on very quickly. The wallpapers are an interesting selection compared to previous releases. We only have a few artificial ones and quite a number of, uh, of uh, photographic ones, which are nice. And I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that. But by default, of course, you do get the GNOME, uh, GNOME 3 tweaking settings. So that it is known as advanced settings. Uh, but here you can come in here and you can change the theme, which uh, it, it does it does list it as the Adwaita theme, uh, as the default GNOME 3 theme, but it is not actually uh, Adwaita in that the, the window borders are, but the theme of the GTK theme is Mint Z, which is an adaptation of Mint X, which obviously would be the previous release. And it does look a little bit funky under, it looks a bit more circular under GNOME 3 than Mint Z does. Mint Z does look quite nice and it's very similar to the GNOME 3 default theme, uh, but it does have a, a, the, obviously the minty green to it. Now, the other comment I wanted to make is that by default, we do have the fans icon set for the applications, but for the, but for the file manager, you will notice that we have the elementary, uh, the Mint elementary adaptation. What I think what would have been better, at least in my opinion, for a bit more continuity, is to use the uh, the elementary Mint icons by default. I'm not sure. I just think they look a bit more consistent, and it seems to I don't know give a slightly more cleaner user interface than the Fanza ones do. Now, as far as pre-installed applications go, we do get quite a bit there. As per usual, you get your Firefox, basically all the top tier open source applications out there: VLC, Thunderbird, Tomboy Notes. Uh, uh, LibreOffice, uh, No Man Player, and apart from the media players being slightly redundant, you get a healthy selection of software here, and that is nothing that is nothing new to Mint. They've done a great job of that in the past. Uh, you get GDB package installer for all your double clicking of the dot debs. You get GThumb for your photo manager, which is nice to see as it is a decent photo manager. And you also get Synaptic as well to help manage with your packages if you so wish. Uh, now, the only other thing here you're going to notice is uh, Caden Live and Zine, but I've only just installed those myself. They don't come by default. Now, this distribution is slightly weightier than the previous releases. Uh, previous DVD releases of Linux Mint 12 have sat around around 800 something megabytes. This time around, we're looking at 1.1 gigs. Mainly that's because we're supporting both GTK2 and GTK3. So there is a lot of libraries that have had to be thrown in here. For most people, that isn't going to be an issue because we were already using DVDs and USB sticks anyway. But it is worth mentioning, you can get a, uh, you can get a no codex version as well, just as you have been in the past. And, uh, and I've really not got anything more to say about that. It's, uh, it works and it does the job and, and the codecs are an easy one click install if you do choose to download the CD version as opposed to the DVD. Now, while I did endeavor to look at the Mate desktop, unfortunately I am having some serious issues with Mate at the present time. It was working at time of release, but unfortunately the after an update, it seems to be not working very well at all. Uh, but however, I will be putting up a review of the Mate desktop environment when it does decide to play ball. But uh, at this stage, I'd like you to let me know, what are you going to be using uh, with Linux Mint 12? Obviously, there is a vast user base out there. So I'd like to ask you, uh, are you going to be upgrading to Linux Mint 12? And if so, are you going to go with the Mint GNOME Shell extensions or are you going to give Mate a go? Um, from my early impressions of playing around with Mate, it is very similar to GNOME 2. Uh, the only differences are that you don't get all those Ubuntu tweaks that Mint used to benefit from, uh, such as the, the nice notification bubbles that used to pop up, also the nice 
sound applets and things like that that uh, that Ubuntu have made tweaks to over the years. It is very stock standard GNOME, uh, similar to what you would get in a distribution like Fedora or Arch or something like that. It is very vanilla GNOME. Of course, it isn't GNOME, it's Mate, which is, uh, which is a legitimate fork. It is still early in development, so that's why they're having a few issues with it. Uh, but hopefully when those issues get ironed out, I will be taking a look at it. But feel free to drop me a comment below or on Twitter at InGalactic. Overall, this distribution is a positive uh, step in that I think it will take out a lot of the transition pain that people are having from to, to GNOME 3. And I think most users are going to click with uh, what Linux Mint 12 is about. I think at this stage, there are still a few rough quirks that have taken me aback a bit. And I think some of those are due to the, uh, to, to the upstream issues that Ubuntu is having. Apart from that, though, you can really see the effort that Linux Mint is going to to help its community and not just change desktop environments uh, as simply throwing caution to the wind. So well done on the Linux Mint team for getting this release out there and helping people adjust to the new, uh, to the really the future of what Linux desktop is, and that is inevitably GNOME 3. So definitely it's worth trying out, seeing if you like it. Uh, as far as customization goes, obviously you can't do much with either the top or bottom panel, so that is a bit of a drawback. But unless you are confident with JavaScripting, uh, you, yeah, you really can't do a whole lot as far as customization is concerned. If you still want that levels of customization, then definitely stick with either the long-term support, which is Linux Mint 9, or of course you can stick with Linux Mint 10 or 11 until those are no longer supported. Am I going to be staying here? Well, probably not, simply because uh, there are a, a huge slew of Ubuntu derivatives that I am going to be looking at in the very near future, uh, including a lot of OS X wannabes and, uh, and even a student edition of Ubuntu long term support release as well, which should be fairly exciting. So yeah, definitely let me know in the comments below what you're going to do as far as Linux Mint is concerned. I'd be very interested to see just what the community's response is here. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you so wish. And you'll be seeing a little bit more content from this channel in the next couple of weeks as things are starting to free up and holidays are on the way. More app reviews and Ingalactic's opinion are hopefully going to be put out quite soon, as well as we do have distro reviews coming as per usual. And also I'm eventually going to get around to that tablet review that I've been talking about, the Acer Iconia Tab A500. So that will be all from me guys, and I shall see you all soon.